Steve Jobs or Bill Gates? Steve Jobs. Why? I don't know, Apple fan. Hmm. Uh, overtime versus working on weekend? Overtime. If you have a choice to uh, uh, give somebody a job, uh, should be sh- should you choose from MBA guy or a hustler? Every day I'm hustling. <laughs> hustling. Mm. So uh, I want to ask you about the investments. So real estate, uh, stock exchange, or crypto, or maybe something completely different. Stock exchange. Yeah. What's your favorite book? Uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Why is that? I it changed my perspective on everything, basically. Yeah, that definitely that book, yeah. Cool. And uh, since you're in this industry, Ferrari or Lamborghini? <laughs> If only that two Ferrari, but I would say Porsche. Yeah. This is Chair, place where we discuss innovations. And today we are going to talk about automotive industry and what this industry brought to us in the last 10 years and what will bring to us in next 10 or 15 or 20 years. It's basically very disruptive what's going on. So uh, about this subject, I think I have a great uh, 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 guest here today. So Milo Stefanovic, uh, Managing Director of, for Adriatic in uh, Jaguar and Land Rover. So Milos, welcome to chair. Thank you very much for having me. So first, um, I want to ask you about uh, situation in automotive industry uh, as i see it as most of us seeing it there is a crisis there and it happened a couple of years ago something like that so can you tell me how did this crisis happen in the industry and uh, where are you going from from uh, where are you going now next to to resolve this crisis i mean uh, the crisis uh, of uh, that that's that's going on right now is is a bit hard to explain in a world would be that started with corona definitely i mean nobody expected uh, uh, nobody expected the, the virus or pandemic but uh, where we are now like two years after the the first uh, hit and first wave of pandemic is like a consequences that a uh, couple of things led us to the to the crisis that we have now which is basically chip shortages Chip shortages. Everybody's talking about that right now. I mean, it's it's uh, how can that happen? Uh, why don't you build another factory of chips uh, like that and and stuff? And I mean, in, I mean, uh, in a plain uh, view of a normal person, that will be a logic thing to 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 ask. I mean, but uh, Corona led to that that uh, everybody everybody kind of put a e break uh, regarding investments, regarding uh, stocks, regarding supplement and everything else. Basically, uh, in a normal in a normal uh, way of doing business, you are going to strive to the model that you have, let's say, just in time logistics in uh, in no couple. stocks and yes, if you need, uh, let's say, if you need uh, anything to build anything, you will see that you don't have it, of course, in stock because you will have uh, your own resources put into that. You will have a stock of something. But uh, for chips, uh, most of the factories uh, did have, let's say, uh, just-in-time logistics. So if I need a chip for today, it's the best thing that uh, it can arrive yesterday evening. So, but um, in in a, let's say in a nutshell, yeah. But uh, after that, I mean, uh, nobody expected that uh, we will be in a lockdown. Nobody expected the demand of all kind of electronics things uh, from computers, from playstations, from uh, everything that can be, you know, uh, used from home. Uh, I don't know, TVs, stereos, everything that uh, that uh, in that uh, appliances and stuff like that. So, uh, but uh, in order for them to work, you need that small thing, which is called chip, of course. But it's also in the cars, like. Uh, thousands of them in in uh, all kinds of modules and, and stuff that are uh, that are you know uh, making the car as it is so uh, another couple of uh, things happened uh, another couple of things uh, in the meantime happened that uh, whoever got the orders first and whoever got you know the contracts for for that or was the client of the chip factories which are basically you know couple of main players in the in the world got the chips and got the supply on time now anybody you know everybody is kind of waiting in line to to that's why now we have a crisis of uh, product as itself you know, the factories cannot uh, supply and deliver the the cars uh, and to 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 ease the demand which is which is ongoing. so there were so many like different theories why this happened and uh, somebody mentioned 
uh, crypto and the mining and the, you know that it's all all interconnected it is it is uh, first of all you know uh, you cannot just build a chip factory be, because it's very complex factory uh, to be built it's uh, the chips are produced in in a almost uh, sterile uh, not almost but basically uh, even more sterile environment than than uh, when you have the operation on the human being on organs or whatever so it's not like that to be built. Bosch is building now a factory, which takes time, but uh, let's say you cannot build it in a couple of months. It's a it's year or year and a half, don't get me wrong, something like that. Uh, you mentioned the crypto mining and everything. Yeah, uh, definitely, you know, uh, another supply, another another demand of all kinds of electronic things, you know, better than me. Uh, what, what What's needed to, to, to what is uh, what is actually needed to, to mine the... the the crypto uh, and uh, second and third things are, are uh, that, uh, that there's also been a fire in one of the factories that that's producing chips and and uh, even the even uh, even water supply of water which is a huge demand of water is needed to cool down the 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 chip factories in producing the chip, chip factories so so uh, more or less it's not just one thing it's it's a series of things and hopefully it will come to an end, right? Is it stabilizing right well, now? Well, in, in today, when we talk about it, there are a couple of theories. There's a theory that it will last uh, throughout 2023, even to the 20, 2000, to wow. 2024. My opinion is that uh, that is uh, that it will be stabilized. Maybe half of the year we will see uh, more stable, uh, more stable. Uh, production and deliveries of the chips but uh, then again the manufacturers of the cars uh, have pulled some some moves in order to you know cut the uh, well let's say to to consolidate their their uh, what are they offering right now so let's try to move from the crisis and mm -hmm. from covid and uh, uh, everything that has been around the last two years and talk about the future and uh, when is any talk about automotive industry there is of course, uh, uh, two subjects, uh, electric, fully electric cars on one hand and um, uh, self-driving cars. So first, I want to ask you about uh, electric cars. 10, 15 years ago, uh, it was science fiction. Uh, in that time, for the for the mask, most of the people would put him in the basket with the lunatics. But now they're talking about him as a genius. So, uh, what do you think is needed and when is going world to become fully electric? Or is it going to be at all like that? I mean, a good and, and ongoing subject, definitely. I mean, um, even f uh, in our market here in Serbia, but uh, of course globally, I think that we are, you know, uh, behind, of course, in Europe and the rest of the world because of the infrastructure here so maybe we will see that uh, you know fully electricized market let's say like that in a couple of years but mainly because of the infrastructure and uh, the of course the we need also to be to buying of the electric car to be more subsidized by the state but uh, my opinion is that we are definitely i mean we are we're not going towards that we are here right now for but um, uh, right now i mean i i'm uh, generally speaking about the adriatic region here and then we can touch globally uh, here, maybe the best solution would be a plug-in hybrid right now because it gives you the possibility to drive on the on the uh, elect electric power alone for some mileage, and then you can just uh, turn on the engine and, and uh, drive. Because of the again infra infrastructure, uh, mainly mainly it's not uh, plus uh, right now you know in order to fully be clean as we are speaking, you know to go fully electric, you need. Uh, you need the supply and everything back what is producing that electric car and everything behind and what's producing electric electricity to be green uh, there's no I mean point it's kind of a hypocrite to, to discuss you're driving electric car which is being made on a, I don't know coal, you know, coal factories, or, yeah, yeah. or the factory which is being built it's not uh, green and so so in order to be fully for me that will be the the most honest you know the most honest answer but uh, Going back to the subject, definitely we are here. Everybody's going there. I mean, all the pro uh, all the manufacturers are going there. So uh, just depends how, how how we here will will uh, compensate. Let's say that that uh, couple of years that we are behind. And what do you think? Who will win the market race? Chinese, Silicon Valley, or some incumbent? Because there is so many companies right now rising in in this domain. 
It's a good question. I mean, my, uh, my money is on both of the both of the worlds. Let's say like that. Uh, I have a uh, shares. So of, save from, save from, that, from, right? <laughs> yeah, for Chinese companies. Then again, I I really like Musk and, and Tesla. But uh, the Chinese market is huge market and huge demand uh, towards electric cars. There are there are a couple of major players, like three to four major player, player, player uh, sorry players, uh, in China uh, that are now slowly even coming to coming to Europe. But I mean, Tesla is uh, Tesla. It's kind of a hyped, you know on that but uh, i don't see who will win uh it's anybody's game at this so time you mentioned tesla we talked about this a uh, uh, few months ago actually uh how you see this company because this company defined the the the, the market at least at the beginning well, yes, I mean, uh, a couple of theories, you know, regarding Tesla, that it's like state project, that it's, you know, uh, all the money from the state has been given to the guy and how he, how he, he became what he is. Definitely, I mean, a specific and eccentric person. I mean, somebody who is not, you know, in line with, with standards. And uh, I think that definitely he's driving, you know, the, the company. But uh, how company started, I... Uh, it didn't smell like it will come to uh, to here, but I think that the biggest strength of Tesla is basically information, <coughs> gathering of information, and if, you know, everything is basically online. Every car has uh, cameras that are, you know, uh, picking up uh, drivers' behaviors, uh, pedestrian behaviors, uh, drivability of all other cars, and. Uh, that's their strength. I think the the most important strength that they have. It's millions of millions and millions. You know that the information that the basically all, every Tesla car is is doing the the job that you know for them uh, collecting the information and sending it to the base camp. Yeah. So the strength of Tesla is basically information. Yeah. There is a saying that uh, uh, Tesla it's not a automotive company but rather data company, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if you if you scratch beneath the, the the cars and the surface, if you read more about it or somebody has an interest into that, you will see the the that uh, their you know uh, their research and development is totally in in all kinds of directions. For example, uh, um, very interesting fact that are you know that uh, they will take over for me. They will just take over the insurance market at least in the states because of the insurance premiums and everything else, you know, they know the behavior of the, their drivers, they know the behavior of their cars, they can calculate how much, you know, accidents did the Tesla be involved, autopilots, this, that, and stuff like this. So basically, why not having just Tesla insurance when you you know that your car won't hit anybody or will break when it needs to break or whatever. It's a very interesting subject and, you know, uh, you should read about it. It's very, very interesting and they will just undermine everybody else. So let's move on to autonomous driving. Now the the biggest technological companies in the world, Google, Apple and many others, are producing their autonomous driving cars. And since I know that you're a passionate driver and a great driver actually, um, uh, I want to ask you what you think is going, is it possible that machines or self-driving cars are going to become better drivers than humans? Are we going to become obsolete in driving? Well, thanks for the kind words. <laughs> First, <laughs> I mean, uh, there's a strong possibility and, and definitely a future for for uh, for that uh, that you stated. I mean, autonomous driving is already here, but not in that sense that uh, that uh, the cars are driving themselves. I mean, the test cars are driving themselves. Tesla is driving itself, but nobody will tell you and claim it that the, dri- that the car is driving itself. That's uh, technically now, uh, uh, let's say, uh, another... Uh, another thing that will help you in your driving or maybe you know assisting uh, in driving and but mainly because of the legislative in that uh, in that uh, in that sense because you know uh, you we are reading here and there uh, uh, an article that uh, some uh, test car hit this or yeah. unfortunately even even uh, head collision with with that uh, or something like that but uh, uh, that's because I'm saying legislative. I mean, um, first you need to you need to have everything consolidated and everything. Who is responsible if if autonomous car uh, is uh, you know involved in in that kind of accident? Yeah, for, for I think example. a few weeks ago there was something about a Tesla accident. I think in Belgium or somewhere there, uh, and uh, they landed all fleet. 
uh, from you know i mean it's it's not pro- it's not a problem that the car will do what it's supposed to uh, it will do you know but um, it's not a problem even that you once you take delivery of the car sign whatever you know that uh, you will not use that uh, in any kind of a way that you will put your hands on the steering wheel and stuff like that but uh, there's a level of autonomous driving you know let's say one two three four five you know and and uh, what we see in the modern cars uh, almost five six even ten years is cruise control, then adaptive cruise control, then lane keeping, then all kind of the systems mixed together. Tesla is using cameras, what we stated. So in, in, in that sense, it's measuring, you know, uh, loads of algorithms are doing their thing, you know, to keep the, the to keep the, the some cars are, are using radars, some cars are, are using the multiple system cameras and radars. But uh, again, in order to that to be fully, you know, autonomous, we will need uh, first to have everything, you know, uh, legal in that point of view that the car can drive you or Uber tomorrow, you know, Uber car without a uh, driver can pick you up. Uh, personally, I believe that uh, in some point we will be safe to do that. Maybe we are right now, but then again, the, the whole subject is not uh, kind of, you know, uh, strict uh, and, and everything defined. What what uh, what needs to be you know fully autonomous car you know but we are we are uh, slowly coming to that I mean so so we mentioned it, uh, Tesla and uh, we talk about uh, self driving car autonomous driving car and uh, electric vehicles but uh, can you disclose some inside information from Jaguar what's going on there. I what mean, no, the not, uh, definitely. I mean, Jaguar <laughs> as a brand is going to be, uh, let's say, to have the reimagined strategy, as they uh, they like to to say it. And I think that we are slowly coming, uh, going to, towards that. You know, that uh, the first we have iPace, which is fully electric Jaguar. But I think that in terms of Jaguar Land Rover, Jaguar will be definitely a full electric, let's say, brand. If I can, uh, that uh, uh, I think that uh, there will be no new models that will be, you know, plug-in hybrids, that every new Jaguar model will be uh, fully electric. And uh, how about uh, autonomous driving, what you're doing in that field? Uh, that too, that too, but I think that first that we will wait uh, to see uh, Jaguar Land Rover autonomous driving, it's not like on priority list definitely, but uh, in order I think that there is a still, still market for <laughs> normal driving, for sure. normal driving cars, you know, but with systems, you know, uh, that will be, you know, upgraded definitely uh, that I mentioned, you know, all kinds of a system doing, uh, doing uh, what they need to be aut- autonomous, you know, I mean, uh, adaptive cruise control and uh, emergency braking, uh, collision warning, back collision warning, that kind of system will be upgraded and uh, eventually will become autonomous. So, uh, still on the subject of autonomous drive because it's a big thing now. And uh, um, I'm thinking about how it's going to change commute, uh, how you see it from your perspective, because well, we spoke, uh, I mean, uh, let's tie to that subject. We spoke at the beginning, uh, I think that success and, uh, the, you know, what's happening for me, it's, it's that, uh, of course, uh, when you go, go older, it's uh, you're starting to realize that, that you just want to, that the time is something that you don't have. And then uh, that time is uh, the precious, you know, uh, <laughs> let's say the precious <laughs> thing that, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, you know, uh, what what you, you need to, to spare and to have. So in order to do that, uh, uh, you need to be as, as uh, well, let's say, as I mean, um, not to worry about that kind of a, uh, that kind of a things. For example, uh, this morning I came from Budapest here and um, pretty tired. I wouldn't mind car driving me. Believe me, I mean, but uh, I think that that will be the the the, the major thing. If I, I would like to drive the car, I will put the button and I will drive the car. But if I need to read an email or send an email or just have an app, I will uh, press a button and then the car will drive me. I will uh, this morning and today I will I won't <laughs> mind that at all, you know. So uh, uh, whenever we whenever is a subject uh, automotive industry, uh, mobility jump up and uh, uh, things around it. Um, what are the key technologies that drive future of mobility? Well, uh, depending on the, when you say mobility, there's uh, also uh, synonyms to that and how the, how we are, uh, you know, uh, describing mobility. I mean, uh, generally, uh, again, I think that everything that we discussed and, and uh, we're discussing now is tied to the, to the uh, generally 
uh, making our life easier. Even mobility, you know, uh, car sharing, um, e-mobility. I mean, uh, even even you know all kinds of things. We see that uh, you know scooters being like shared. Like mobility, yeah. 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 So, but in that terms, I mean, um, I think that uh, everybody is. Uh, Maybe even the the manufacturers are maybe pushing too high, you know, for us to to not to be owners of the cars, but to you know to to share the car, to lease the car, to have an options, which is not a bad thing for me. I'm just not seeing it yet, maybe in fully full comprehensive as, as they say, but uh, everything is definitely going going towards that. You know, you will pay a monthly fee as for your I don't know Apple subscription of that or of this and that. Uh, you will pay a monthly fee for the car. You will have, a, if you're not a fanatic, you will, you know, every car, uh, I hate to say it, but, you know, you, we are hearing it a lot. Every car now, new car is kind of a similar to, to another car. And if you're not, you know, so enthusiastic about it, if you uh, imagine the car is point A to point B thing, then it's, it's uh, and most of the people are, then it, it's a good thing. You know, you will pay a subscription, you will pay a monthly fee. You, you can have a car, for example, that if you don't need 4x4, you will have a small city car. If you need a... Uh, your sub subscription can be that 15 days per, per, per year you can have a 4x4 or even 50 days per year you can have a convertible maybe. So in your subscription you're driving a small city car and 15 days of your 20 or a month of vacation you will have a convertible, nice little, or a sports car maybe, and 4x4 for uh, winter or uh, something like that. Uh, uh, you mentioned earlier when we talk about Tesla and insurance, uh, how this is going to influence insurance industry? Well, I mean, uh, we will see how how will they implement that. But I think that they will take over the market at least in the USA. I mean, they're they're really strong about it. And when you put two plus two, I mean, it's it's really great thing because you can. Uh, it's my product. I mean, if I was Elon Musk, it's my product. I know what my cars are doing. I I have all the data, the information that I stated, uh, all the data from all of my cars all around the world or or in states that i know that they are they are like i mean one percent of the of the fatalities two percent three percent of hitting the bumper or this or that i'm just now uh, babbling as an exam example but uh, i know that i can give you the best possible price because i'm sure that my car won't hit the other car or won't be in, in like total crash or something like that in that sense it's it's brilliant you know it's genius okay so uh, we talked about future, we talked about uh, what have been, what will be, but uh, can you explain to me a bit how automotive industry works, how, uh, what are the dealerships, uh, what are the manufacturers, what are the rela relationships between them, because when I uh, started to investigate for, for our chair talk, I was a bit confused with that. I mean, the, the generally uh, automotive industry, of course, starts with manufacturer, with with uh, product itself. But uh, in terms of uh, manufacturer being in the market, that's uh, totally different, uh, different things. I mean, a lot of manufacturers are choosing not to be, let's say, present in some uh, market or region, but to be represented by a by a company. Uh, for example, if we talk, we are we're talking about Adria region. Most of the manufacturers are dividing this our region here, Balkan region, in Adria Adriatic region. Adria region is basically ex Yugoslavia with uh, with Albania. So, uh, but a good team. I mean, uh, because a lot of my friends uh, and family and everybody uh, don't know who is what in in that chain. Let's say who is the manufacturer, who is dealer, who is importer. And, and uh, in, let's say, in this kind of a setup, if Andriatic region, most of the manufacturers work, uh, uh, they're giving uh, a company, which basically I work now, uh, importership rights uh, for, for a region. So uh, you have all the rights, uh, obligations uh, and everything with that uh, to be a distributor for a region. So, so you, can use, you can use the branding, uh, name, everything. Everything, yeah? everything. You have, and you all have the rights. responsibility that is coming yes. with it, right? Yes, yes. So they're choosing that because of the, let's say, regional varieties or, or you know, cutting the costs and everything else. But, uh, for example, Adria region has a EU and non-EU. Uh, every market has its own, you know, uh, taxation, uh, legislative, customs, uh, drumarina, trosharina, this and that. So in order for a big manufacturer not to cope with that, they're just uh, giving, of course, you have a bidding uh, process. For example, you want to be, a, tomorrow you you will like to be a representative of a brand, you have a bidding process, you're being called to, to uh, 
uh, for for a bidding, let's say, uh, for the brand uh, in terms of uh, can you handle the, handle that? Are you you know capable, financially solid? Do you have a history, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, you have then manufacturer, you have then importer for a certain region, and then you have dealers. Dealers are the uh, retailers basically in the market which uh, have their own uh, dealerships with, uh, and they are basically uh, uh, importer is a wholesaler, dealer is a retailer. So when you say I will call the factory or the dealer will say I will call the factory, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are cooperating directly with factory, but with importer, which is Okay, I mean, for a normal for a normal person doesn't need to know that, because important in the region, important in the region is, uh, as we said, has uh, all rights and uh, obligations, and but uh, to implement and to enforce the the, the brand, yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically, you started from Adriatic region and and explained how it works. Is it same thing on the bigger scale? Let's say uh, in, for the well, in some market yes, in some no. Somewhere is the manufacturer presence. Uh, we call that NCs, you know, NC market that uh, NCIs basically, or, or varieties of that. That uh, you have a strong present or the present of the factory itself. Somewhere the factory is joint venture, and some and but the future of this, uh, most of the manufacturers are are speaking about the agency model, which is very very. I mean, a tricky subject right now because agency model is uh, in a sense that uh, factory will have, I mean, it's a, it's a good concept. Uh, I'm just uh, thinking how and <laughs> how to explain it. It's a good concept. <laughs> if it's hard for you to explain um, how... <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's very interesting. Uh, agency model would, will be, will be uh, you, you as a normal consumer of a product, yeah, you should be able to tomorrow online or even visit the showroom and um, you will, you know, go online, click to see uh, your car or preferable configure, configure the car and stuff like that. But uh, the pricing should be equal, let's say, in all the, all, all the markets. I mean, again, I'm trying to explain it in, in plain words, but um, it's a good concept, but it's hard to implement a uh, uh, pure agency model. Uh, I see it as a varieties and I still see uh, I still see the, the role of importer in that, but let's go back to the subject. So uh, every market, every car should be the pricing in, let's say, in our region should be the same. Or uh, if you say in Serbia, you have three, four, five, ten dealers of the of some brand, the pricing should be same. So you go online, you pick the car or you go to the dealership, you see you have a test drive and that's it. You order the car and there is no, can I get a, a better uh, price here in Belgrade or in Novi Sad or in Čačak or no. The prices is dictated by the manufacturer. So and you as a dealer get get a fee to basically to sell or to de- deliver the car. Yeah. Uh, the fee uh, that's basically covering uh, your costs of uh, doing a test drive, have the car in, in showroom. The, the agency model is going also to that uh, extent that uh, dealers uh, will not, not have uh, their own test cars, but the manufacturer will provide them. So in order, they will have no costs, but they will have a fixed fee yeah. in order to... to uh, that's something that's uh, now a pretty act- actual uh, subject on, on all fronts and all manufacturers. But uh, we will see, I think, in the future, some kind of a mix agency slash importer models, I think. Yeah. It sounds like when you're saying like that, like a fixed price, wherever you, you're buying it, um, it sounds strange. It sounds like manufacturer is dictating the price from the beginning, right? Yeah. That doesn't sound. Doesn't that sound like a monopoly? Well, no. I mean, uh, because it's agency you, model, right? Yeah, but, but when you, when you put it like that, yes, but no. It's a, a contra. They are trying to uh, minimize the let's say hustling from okay. the importers and dealers and everybody. So you will have the price which is transparent price. That's the price of the car, in uh, and everybody should 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 have that price, which is fairly good. I mean, there's no point of then losing time and going to this dealer or that dealer or importing the car from that market or that market. You know, manufacturer is is putting the price and price label on the car, and that's it. Okay, you're calculating your costs, delivery, and everything, but the price that's the that's the I mean. Uh, is it realistic? Again, for our markets, uh, so so because you have uh, taxation, you have you cannot have the let's say same price for one model, let's say Range Rover Sport in all the markets here. It's because of the uh, taxation and customs and everything. But the point of agency model is contra to what you're saying. It's not monopoly, but uh, 
the price, uh, uh, let's say, controlling of the price to the retailer. So a retailer should should ha should ha should should have all the you know data and all the transparency of the price. That's that's the most important thing, and everything else is controlled in the process. We will see how it will be. work in, yeah, in, in, yeah. in the real world. Well, right? I gave you the plain, you know, agency model and it's, you know, pure content. But as, as I said, I don't see it in a pure, purest way, which is good on paper. And, you know, the paper can have it. Excel sheet is one and the reality yeah. is, is, is different. So I want to move on one specific subject. Uh, I know that you're a big car enthusiast. Yep. And... Uh, even though you're working for Jaguar and uh, Range Rover, uh, I know about your Gotham project. And uh, I'll give my viewers the, the photos of, of, of that. But can you explain to me how, how this thing happened and how it started and where is it right now? What is Gotham project? I mean, uh, Gotham Project Six. Basically, it's a hashtag that I put on, on an Instagram when I started to work on it. It's, it's an old BMW 6 Series, basically factory. Uh, E24 is the factory. It's 1985 production year of the car, but it's uh, kind of a modified with an M5 engine of the newer generation. And it's, uh, as I grew up, it grew grew with me and, and you know, but it's a mainly track day car. It's now, it's, it's a racing car, but my passion towards cars goes, you know, uh, long, long <laughs> before I even knew to, to drive. So it, it, it makes sense when you say that I'm working in, in auto industry and being surrounded by cars. But, you know, I have uh, more of that modern classic. I like that modern cars. So every time that I have to spare, I'm I'm basically around them. It was very interesting to me that that car of yours became a movie star, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's a regional blockbuster, you know, Yuzhny <laughs> Vetter. I mean, it's it's a funny story. My friend called me and said, "Yeah, they are looking for some car," and nobody knew that that uh, movie will be. Uh, I mean, that big. Yeah, hit, that yeah. that big. I mean, the the cast was good, but uh, you know, the story was okay for me. But I didn't knew that it will it will explode. So I gave my car for the for the filming like 10, 12 days, and uh, and it just uh, you know now it's it's a synonym for the uh, BMW <laughs> <laughs> six series. Using that, uh, so now it's a past part of the history, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's cool. 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 Uh, from history, let's go to the future. Uh, what do you think the streets are going to look like? Let's go 15 years from now. 20, 2040. Ha, I mean, a good, another good, good, <laughs> excellent uh, question and subject. I think that uh, it will be a mix of everything that we discussed. It will be a self-driving cars. It will be even self-driving, uh, let's say, helicopters, because uh, there's a company called Archer Aviatics. They're uh, recently listed on New York Stock Exchange that are now uh, doing uh, the commutes. Their main business is uh, uh, they're building basically small air aircrafts. That's what I, I'm not choosing to say choppers because they're not choppers you can you can uh, see afterwards uh, it's kind of a mixed choppery thing uh, with uh, okay. with uh, <laughs> some kind of engines that will basically uh, use as to commute so uh, and i really really believe uh, in that project because for example in la you i was there you know and they're mainly uh, doing their business you know they're explaining how will you commute in la i mean you you will need a half of day or, or, yeah. or a day but uh, not uh, not as a chopper you you you're in the chopper and now you're here but as a as a affordable co commute you know small small things that you know can carry up to i don't know 10 15 tomorrow 20 passengers that will be so in a mix, it will be flying cars, flying saucers, flying choppers, everything. But I, I still st see streets as, as they are, you know, because uh, it will be a shame not to have internal combustion, I mean, engines, you know, with, with the normal petrol uh, that can be, you know, driven on, I don't know, as a pleasure cars or something like that. that uh, definitely, it will, it will be a shame, you know. This was so interesting. Thank you very much for taking a part of this conversation. You're welcome. And for you out there, uh, subscribe, hit subscribe card, and see you next Thursday when we talk about some other innovations. Thanks.